Hey everybody, you're watching We The Fandom, where we discuss comic books, pop culture, and the fandom experience. If you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button and subscribe to the channel to see more content. How's it going everybody? Jacob here at We The Fandom, and today's video is going to be about why new and even some old female characters can't seem to thrive in Marvel on their own merit. This video is also about issue 4 of The Mighty Valkyries. What I wanted to talk about in the comic is regarding the character Runa, a new character and obvious analog for Tessa Thompson's Valkyrie in the MCU, given that she's the only black Valkyrie. And this story, or rather half of it, has her character returning to Asgard after a long absence to meet Thor. She comes to him wielding Yarnbjorn, formerly Thor's axe, though it has now been retconned to originally be hers. In fact, her entire character is a retcon, as she is named as one of the nine original Valkyries, even though the nine Valkyries have existed in Marvel canon for decades and she was never among them. The original nine were, and I apologize because I'm probably going to butcher the names, Brunhilde, Valtrata, Hildegard, Grimgerta, Hekara, Leita, Ortlinda, Rosvesa, and Signet. This is another ham-fisted attempt by Marvel to get readers to like an MCU version of a character by giving her status and power that we've never seen her earn while treating Thor like a child who needs to behave instead of as the king of Asgard. Even if we could pretend that black Exguardians exist, why would, would they retcon the Valkyries? Why couldn't they just make her character an Asgardian warrior? And why did they give another of Thor's weapons to a woman to try and make her interesting? Again, her being the former owner of Yarnbjorn is a retcon, as Yarnbjorn being introduced in Thor God of Thunder number 1 was given to us as the weapon of Thor before he became worthy of Mjolnir. This is basically just a lamer repeat of Jane Foster becoming Thor and... When did Jason Aaron become such a bad writer? How did he go from Gord the God Butcher to this? Jason Aaron wrote Thor for years and wrote him very well, and yet you have to go to another writer, Donny Cates, the current writer of Thor, if you want to see a character that actually acts like Thor. All that aside, the art in the half of the comic not featuring Thor is actually pretty amazing, and if you want to read good Thor stories, in which the Allfather of Asgard isn't treated like a child, go read Donny Cates' current run on Thor. The writing is really good and the art is amazing. Just look at this Thor. And then look at this Thor. And then look at Odin. He has nothing to do with this comic that we're talking about, I just think his current design looks badass. But this habit of taking new or sometimes even old minority characters and giving them the mantle or powers of typically white characters is nothing new. As again, we've already been through this with Jane Foster's Thor, though at least this time they're not trying to convince us that Thor is just a title and not the name of the character. Despite numerous examples of this that we've seen in Marvel Comics recently, those examples have yet to demonstrate the necessity of that trope. Believe it or not, a character can be their own character and be popular without taking the powers of another. On the flip side, you can also use a well-established character who can temporarily have the powers of another without it being used as a plot device to get you to like that character. Take Captain America, a character who has wielded Mjolnir, and I'm only going to use the Fear Itself example, not Hydra Cap, because that was an alternate reality Captain America and to use the Cosmic Cube to alter the enchantment on Mjolnir. But Captain America and Thor are extremely different characters. They have different backgrounds, different fighting styles, different power sets, different beliefs, and personalities. Neither one has to put down the other or disrespect the other in order to show their value within the Marvel Universe. And Captain America hasn't earned his place just because he used a weapon of Thor's once. He had already earned his place as a character, and he's earned the respect of Thor because of his character and his merit, not because he could use Mjolnir. These two characters are equals in some ways and not equals in others. You don't need another storyline of, hey, I've got your weapon, to be convinced of that fact. On one occasion, and only for a few moments, mind you, Mjolnir was a temporary add-on to an already established character. Now, the implication that a small number of fans as well as creators give off is that only white male characters will ever be seen as relevant, therefore, minority characters need to take their mantles and or their powers. I say, those people are just afraid to create or develop already existing characters. Let's look at a female character like She-Hulk. Some might complain that she was just made to be a sex symbol for men. Well, newsflash, most of the female characters were back then, because even though there have always been female comic book readers, comics largely play on the male fantasy, thereby giving us attractive female characters to like and strong male characters to aspire to. Despite the fact that she was created in an era where female heroes were largely made to be side characters or romantic interests, despite the fact that She-Hulk was one of Marvel's first tokenized characters, tokenized meaning taking usually a straight white male character's identity or mantle and handing it over to a minority character, Despite all that, She-Hulk quickly became her own character, and an interesting one, not just because she was the first Marvel character to break the fourth wall, but because Jennifer Walters as a Hulk was distinctively different than Bruce Banner. While Bruce Banner was a tortured scientist, 
scientist whose childhood trauma and repressed anger literally turned him into a rage monster, Jennifer Walters became who she wanted to be. For her, the transformation wasn't the bane of her existence. Jennifer Walters, as a person, was shown to us to be modest, mousy, somewhat insecure character. But when she turned into She-Hulk, her main attribute is easily her confidence. Because she's now in the body she wants to be in, and she's now the person that she wants to be. Of course, now they've changed She-Hulk, basically making her more bulky, dumb, and angry like regular Hulk. Demonstrating once again that these people believe the only way that a female character can be shown to be quote-unquote strong is if they're not only made to look more masculine, but also display the characteristics of a quote-unquote toxic male, such as being arrogant, rude, self-centered, selfish, and violent. The point of this video is really just to say nobody likes seeing their favorite character get belittled by the writer, and if you need to alter a male character in comparison to how they're normally portrayed, or give a female character the characteristics of a powerful, well-liked male character, then that female character couldn't really stand on her own in the first place. But let me know what you guys think about this topic in the comment section below. As always, if you enjoyed this video, please leave a like and subscribe to the channel. Also, hit that notification bell so you never miss a new video. I'll see you all next time.